Hello, welcome to Going 19, episode 69. Today we finish our discussion on the first half of part two of Wolves of the Kala, up to and including chapter five, The Tale of Grey Day. I am Ed, with me are Ali and Amber. Let's start the show. Yeah. Um... Of the rest of Mr. Mark Cross briefcase, there is no. <laughs> I love that. I love when he does that. Yeah, the little nicknames and they just they tickle me to no end. <laughs> um, so the one feeding on Lupe was type three, or he'd have been deader than dead, right? Oh well, that's the only time he can see. So what? If that was a type two, what would he have seen? Just. Well, to, I, well I guess the type twos either seem to feed to death or feed to turn. So, like, those marks wouldn't go away. Oh, interesting. At least that's my opinion. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you make it away from too many type two encounters. It might be a one and done type situation. Right. That's kind of their whole thing. Like, that's what I mean. They go into an area and just take over. <laughs> Yeah. They like eat everybody and leave. <laughs> <laughs> when I came back to Sanity, uh, Callahan's like, I must have run a long way because when I came back to Sanity, I was at 2nd and 19th Street. <laughs> of course you were. How could that have happened? <laughs> what's What's the row 2nd and 46th? You know, I should probably write that down. I don't know. But they say it. It's two blocks away. From where, From 19th? Uh, that doesn't sound right. And no, no, but I remember them saying somewhere in the story it comes up, and it, and Roland and Eddie and Jake all like give each other a look, and they're like, wherever that is, it's only two blocks from the vacant lot. No, I think that happened already. Because then they're like, but at the time it would have been Tom and Jerry's deli, not a vacant lot. Tom and Jerry's artistic deli. Excuse me. <laughs> And I'm sorry, I picture like a cat and a mouse. There's, there's no way around that. Right. <laughs> I'm like, wow, they finally made up and went into business together. Um, well, you know, Jerry never really had a problem. It's always Tom that had the problem. Uh, I like how he goes to the bar and he's like, uh, you've been keeping something for me. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah. One way to look at it. Um... Yeah, so he just wait. So when he saves Lupe, is that when he like takes off? No, well, he no, he um, he takes the stuff because he's like trying to hide it. And I even wrote that down where he's like, "Crap, I have to go back out there and get his ring and his wallet and his shoes." And then he's like, don't you dare complain. Not when 95% of him is gone. Yeah, just conveniently disappeared. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I cracked well, especially don't when you... you have an easy disposal of literally you work in a homeless shelter, you can just like pop it in the donation. <laughs> yeah. He was already thinking about the guy's shoes. Like, hey, those are good looking shoes. Or <laughs> take the, I mean, go pawn it. Shit, you're at a homeless shelter, right? People need money, I'm sure. Oh, you might get in trouble if you do that. That might lead to a back trail. But, um, yeah, I like how he like chastises himself. Don't you dare complain. <laughs> well, I mean that's definitely more convenient because now he's like, Pear Callahan. Oh, that's what happens. He starts killing the vampires after Lupe, and he they're kind of starting to close in on him. Well, Lupe gets and he's. Lupe yeah. dies from AIDS. And yeah, but he goes, no, Lupe dies from getting from well, the Hitler brothers. AIDS from the vampire. Well, which is right. interesting. <laughs> oh, Lupe dies from, yeah, that's a whole new terrifying concept, though. <laughs> which okay. I don't quite understand that because, like, I mean, I guess if the blood was on the fangs from someone else, but that doesn't make sense. 
It doesn't make sense because, like, are you telling me that every person who's been, you know, sucked by a vampire has not had a disease that could have been transmitted that way? Like, that doesn't. Yeah, happen. why is it only AIDS? Yeah. Why, why don't Why don't they have syphilis and gonorrhea and and hepatitis? You know, he, hemophilia. Yeah, <laughs> like all that, all the good ones. He uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't know where I pulled that from. <laughs> uh, no, that's the one where your blood. Well, your blood doesn't clot, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, so Lupe dies of AIDS and he starts killing vampires. They start closing in. Uh, he kind of escapes at the last minute and ducks into another world, hiding from the low men who do the low men thing with their fancy car and ride by real slow. I feel like they do that a lot. Uh, and then he says, Basically, the hell with this. It's getting too hot. And he gets on the bridge and goes somewhere into another world, right? And then when he's gone for whatever that amount of time is, I'm not sure, um, the other guy gets killed or murdered or beat really bad. I can't think of his name. Yeah. Um, well, the guy who started it, uh, Rome. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Rowan. Rowan. Mm -hmm. Roman or Rowan? Maybe I'm Rowan, because I thought it was interesting that it was the same as the main character in uh... <laughs> The Witching Hour. Yeah, The Witching Hour. And that it's a guy. That, yeah, that... <laughs> I don't know any Rowans, but I know two in the books. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try to heard the name outside of fiction. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, so then he comes back and wait, is that where we left off? Yeah. When he when he comes back? Uh well I don't think he'd even technically come back. I think he was just saying he needed to go back and he needed to go back in a way that didn't travel the roads. Well yeah. Yeah. They, the, so, okay, even when, not just the vampires, someone had begun hunting me, and he said, yes, but not just the vampires. Even when that had been a mythological idea, it didn't seem entirely right. I knew it wasn't the dead, at least. They could see me, but didn't care one way or the other. Who is he talking about? Who could see him? Um, the dead, yeah. But the type who are the dead, the, you know, so not vampires. So he's seeing he can see both undead and the type threes. So he's talking about like, like what Susanna oh, saw, like a dead person right, walking right, around. They called yeah. the they called type twos also undead. <laughs> right. But my assumption was that he meant yeah, like people who have died and don't know they're dead. Like like the ghost people who I haven't yeah. figured out what they're doing around yet. I'm not sure what going on with them so he's got vampires and ghosts so they could see me but they didn't care except for the hope that it might be able to fix them or put them out of their misery okay uh did we wait so the dead are walking around hoping somebody's going to help them it's not usually like ghosts are very needy. They at least want you to fix something before, <laughs> before they'll leave. Like, why is that my problem? You should have took care of that before you died. I mean, it's not your problem if you don't mind being haunted. <laughs> yeah, well, right. I guess that's true. Um, the uh, so he he, he sees his first uh, uh. I don't know, cryptic message. Not quite lost dog posters yet, but uh, I think on the park bench it says he comes here, he has a burned hand, and then he he's uh, a, a, what is it, spray painted on a no parking sign. His hair is mostly white now. Yeah. <laughs> and his name might be Collingwood. Like that, well, that was nowhere near close. But I wouldn't it's even so, worry like, about that one. It's so it's like scary too. Like I can picture that in a movie where you're just like, 
like slowly seeing these signs like just even in one shot maybe like walking down the street and you're like oh crap (laughs) i can see him walking in central park like at night you know uh what do you say uh street light to street light pooling uh and like seeing one of them signs so it's not somebody hunting you there is a lot of people hunting you and they're leaving each other messages to try to find you Oh yeah, my and then God. he sees the one about uh he sees the one about the other person. He's like, I don't know who she is, but she's in trouble. <laughs> uh who is that? I don't remember that. It um, wasn't somebody we know, but he saw another pest another no. poster. Right. Have you seen our Irish setter? He's <laughs> a stupid old thing, but we love him. Burned right forepaw. And I go back to that. Who so this is low men leaving other low men? Yeah. Uh, signs, I guess. Like, who who are these? Who would recognize that and go, oh, that's that fucking priest? You know, that is a good point. Why not just be direct? Nobody's paying attention anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I feel like he has a burned hand that's pretty direct. They're not calling him like our Irish setter yet. And it said hand and not forepaw originally. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is um, true. <laughs> I just realized that. Why so. change? <laughs> Yeah, why did they turn him into a dog? Um, the type three vampires are the and the vagrant dead. I like that word, the vagrant dead. They're like homeless dead people. <laughs> um, so that would suck. You, you died. Now you don't even have a house to haunt. Jeez. Um, Amber, uh, have either of you guys read uh, Regulators? The, like, desperation. We've talked about um, this before. I have not, but... I... Okay. Yeah, well, I think I've that's read a... Desperation. I haven't read The Regulators. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think that's a direct reference, and I think The Regulators are low men, which I don't know that they were at the time, but I think they definitely are now. Interesting. Uh, well, yeah, I'm going to have to go back and read that. Like I said, once you go to the tower, everything leads to the tower. Well, it's, I mean... <laughs> retrofitted or not it's still nice because it's kind of like like solving little mysteries afterward <laughs> yeah well yeah when you go back and re- especially like when you go back and read the tower again you realize how much there that you didn't understand was there mm-hmm. um like we're doing that now I mean, never mind not, not even really want to like make a vague reference to something i'm not going to um Blue coffins on the low man's hand. Uh, blue coffin tattoos on the low man's hands. I was surprised by that. Um, because that's the big coffin hunter. Like, is that just a thing? Like, I thought that was specific to what's the names in them. I think um, they say it somewhere in here. They're all soldiers of the Crimson King. All the coffin hunters. Oh, huh? wait. Yeah, he does say all, all the low men, all the coffin hunters, all all everything. <laughs> yeah, here it says, um, a lot or is that what you're reading? A lot of them wear long yellow coats, but not all. A lot of them have blue coffins tattooed on their hands, but not all. Big yeah. coffin hunters rolling, Eddie murmured. Yeah. What they are, what they really are, is soldiers of the Crimson King, Callahan said. And the eyes starting to show up, I see. Watch for the walk and do. <laughs> oh, hell, the Crimson King. Um, I like how Callahan refers to him. He's like, you've heard of the gentleman I see. <laughs> and I was like, you know, Isn't this the second time in this story? Didn't Callahan just like earlier in his story tell him not to mention him by name at night or something like that? Yeah. Was that last night or was that? I don't remember. I think it was, yeah, the night prior. But I think it was, it's the difference between talking about it at night when maybe Black <laughs> is more powerful and there's like, like everything's scarier in the dark kind of thing. Yeah. It's like fucking uh, Sauron. Like if you're thinking about him, his eye like turns to you. Mm-hmm. You're talking <laughs> about him. The old eye. I like how. Uh, like he knows someone's after him. He's like, I began to think of, I drew another type one vampire. Like, oh God, like just give up at that point. 
<laughs> like we're, so we're gonna go through that Salem's lot all over again. Oh god. <laughs> wow. Right. And then he's like, right idea or wrong, I found it comforting to know my brain was still capable of some logic. No, that's not no. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, I, I wasn't that important. Okay. Um, there was a sign halfway across the bridge that says Lamarck Industries. Something he didn't see till he saw it stamped on Andy the robot, which would concern me. Mm-hmm. Which, the Merc Foundry. N- yeah, not gonna lie, I, I did not remember seeing Lamarck anywhere, but North Central Positronics. Like if they had put that, that, that I would have caught my attention. But I had to go back and be like, wait, it was on Andy. Like where? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I didn't remember that. I didn't remember Lamarck at all, honestly, even in Lud. Um, oh, wait, in, the, in Lud, it said Lamarck Foundry. I don't, I don't remember it. Probably one of the things that I didn't pay attention to because I didn't know what it was. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like North Central Positronics and the Somber Corporation. Uh, Turtle Bay. Well, that wasn't necessarily... Bad, other than they were being built by Salmbro, right? Real Bay Condominiums. Isn't that what they're building in the lot? That it that's what the sign says, yeah. Like, yeah, like coming soon, but who knows soon, how yeah. old the sign is. I like how... Uh, yeah, and he's like, there's no footbridge there. You know how many times I've been across that bridge? He's like, it's there. You, you know, it's kind of hard to see. And he's like, it's only the first of the secret road, uh, ways... Um, and he's like toe dash turnpikes. I dig the concept. Like, ooh. I, no, it's both intriguing you. and terrifying at the same yeah. time. <laughs> I kind of, I think I would have to check it out. Good. <laughs> like, if you never see me again, I'm having a good time. <laughs> uh, hopefully, or it could be like, you guys know what quantum leap is. He's always trying to find the way home. No. <laughs> he's like a physicist who rips thing in time, so he's always traveling to different points in time trying to find his timeline again. <laughs> that what the one with oh. Bradley Cooper? No, that was a TV show. Oh. Uh, no. And they actually they redo it now. Um there's a reboot of it. I have my D V R but can't get into it. I I want to, I want to like it more than I do, I guess. Um, Bradley Cooper was, that was called, uh, mm, I can't think of it. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Timeline or something? That one's not like uh, Interstellar? What? No, that's, that's McConaughey. Mm. Interstellar's uh, kind of terrible. Whatever. Too. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Minute. You can go to that planet for 10 oh, minutes. Oh, actually, but like, you're kind of right. He is trying to get back home. But Yeah, well, I don't know if Callahan, I guess he is. Or is he just going? I meant in Interstellar, but... Oh. I don't, but never mind. I, don't, I can't say why else it's related or it's a spoiler for Interstellar. So. <laughs> no. I mean, how old is the movie? <laughs> well, uh, because of time travel, then. Yeah, that's... That's a terrifying concept. <laughs> like, well, like if you like get stuck, that, that's what, never mind. Um, I'm not gonna go into move. space, so I'm not worried about it. Probably not. I think I'm kind of <laughs> scared. It's not ready yet. I need to like first eight thousand trials first before like you know, like it's like getting on a plane in the fifties. I think I'll wait till like the eighties. <laughs> like you had a choice, <laughs> not being born. Right. Well, you know. It's like getting on a plane in the 80s, so I'll wait till the 2000s. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm probably never going to space. I find it slightly terrifying to think too hard about the fragility of our existence. Mm-hmm. Hanging out in this blue ball in the middle of something, uh, the universe is so big it's incomprehensible. Yeah. yeah. 
it's sad. The universe is expanding, which means it has an end. I'm like, okay, well, what's on the other side? The universe can't have an end by definition. Isn't that where the theory of the multiverse comes from? Basically. No. And some smart guy made up the word multiverse, and now here we are. <laughs> um, I like uh, the um, soldiers of the Crimson King. Are they wolves? He's like, well, I can't say for sure, but they're wolves of a kind. Like he's, I think they're talking about the vampires, right? Like, but yeah, he's they... saying, do you think the wolves could be low men? Oh, they. Oh, that's what he's saying. Um, he's like, I well, mean, they're definitely wolves of a kind. <laughs> right, they're definitely low men, but not the low men. I think that's. Uh... I do love this mystery over the wolves. <laughs> Yeah, it, it you know, hey, that's what it is. Like I said, this book is classic Stephen King, small town, you know, don't give away all your secrets at once. Oh, oh yeah, it's in the middle, smack dab of the tower. Like they took a little, like, well, I know you said you hated the detour, but I love the detour. But they took a little detour into a small town so we can do what, you know, we're good at. And then we'll go, you know, we'll, throw, we'll deal with some tower stuff to make it a little more complicated, but. Like, so far, this book is basically small town drama, suspense. What are we going to do? Uh, you know, something's happening that we're not sure what, and we won't find out probably till, till it happens. Uh, that, that's all, like, the Stephen King I grew up on. Um, anyway, nobody has anything to say about that. Well, I agree. <laughs> It's very, we're, the beginning, the first parts of the reading were definitely more Stephen King, or more classic Stephen King. I feel like this reading was way more, it felt a lot more towery than, like, small town, because it wasn't as much about the cow. Yeah, that's true. This part was, yeah, the first part was all getting to the cow of small town. This part's more how. Callahan. Callahan and the Dark Tower and how that's all fitting. And we get the tie in from the low men. <laughs> yeah. Which I, I thinking yeah. about like Callahan talks about how he was um you know, when he would go on the run, like he would do his thing, kill a little bit, and then get out of town when it would get too hot. And I'm like, how so this is basically the life I guess that Ted would have lived had he not been caught. <laughs> uh you know. kind of what he was doing. Yeah. yeah, and it's not a good one. You know, like how it's not sustainable. Right. I mean, it doesn't seem fun. It might be. And what world put Hamilton on the ten dollar bill? Come on. <laughs> like, oh wait, isn't he on the uh, one of them? Wait, not Hamilton. Who am I thinking? Of? Wait, yeah. yeah I Hamilton. was like, wait, isn't he on the ten dollar bill? Wait. No. I don't. I think he is no. in like in the real America. <laughs> Jackson's on the twenty. It's because he's. I a... feel like he. Wait, I just read something that the wrong present person was on the wrong. I don't know. No, they are, but I think in like doesn't. I'm gonna look it up because I feel like an idiot. Now. I think Hamilton is on a ten dollar bill. Now that I said that. Yeah, in our world, he's on a ten dollar yeah. bill. Right. Oops. I'm thinking he got too much credit by being on the $10 bill. <laughs> why, do, why do we have that guy? What did he ever do? All you know how to do is get shot. And, do you, you know, I just watched something on that. He shot high because, like, apparently, like, you could bend the rules and still have a duel and shoot but not try to hit the person, and then everybody's honor would be restored and you could both live. But, so he shot high, and the other guy shot him in the chest, or Burr shot him. Right in the chest. <laughs> I guess he didn't get the message that they were supposed to shoot high. Anyway, that's a detour. Or he wanted to kill him. <laughs> I, well, yeah, I think he did. Mm. You're relying on the guy you just pissed off to not shoot you. Uh, without, <laughs> you know, I think I might need to confirm that before we actually put that into practice. I need to draw up a contract about this the whole duel thing. Hamilton is on the 10, by the way. 
<laughs> yeah, okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. So it's us that are stupid. Damn it. Um, <laughs> a thousand lost worlds of the road. Five years on the road, and all the rest. Do you can? That's a good one too. Is that is that Kala? Can. can it? Can it? And do you can? Uh, that's a good point. I guess they're kind of the same. All right? Is that Kala speak? I'm not sure. Five years can be forever. Oh, there's one. Lost Siamese cat, two years old. Answers to the name of Ruta. He's noisy, but full of fun. Yeah. And then they're like, dial 764, wait for the beep, give your number. They're like, what's up? You're not even going to talk to anybody. Isn't that what Bobby's wait. mom did? Yeah, I was just thinking that. I'm like, wait, some people do respond to these signs, but how? Wait, hold on. She, I, I kind of also just put that together. How did she know that was about Ted? Like, that's such a weird thing to do. <laughs> I don't know. Did we ever even talk about that? But that was that was after uh, <coughs> came back traumatized. Right. She did it out of spite, but like, I don't. How care did she know about, it was Ted? You know, how upset I am! It's like if you see a lot lost pet poster, you immediately are like, "Oh, these people want money for this guy I know." It's like, how did you put that connection together? <laughs> But yeah, yeah. there's a name I recognize. I don't know if I would immediately think person seen a lot. <laughs> pet poster. Right. Well, it, I I mean, yeah, it worked on Bobby's mom, but other than that, and how yeah, I agree. Like how <laughs> fuck did she make that connection? How does anybody make that? Like, who are these for? Exactly. Well, yeah. I guess they're for other low men, but I was gonna use wouldn't, Bobby's wouldn't mom. other low men already know that they're looking for him? <laughs> right, right. Very complicated. Things don't get as we get closer to or further along on the tower. That would be, um, I don't know, slightly stressful to keep looking at the money to see what world I was in. Well, that's what that's what I'm saying. But at this point, he doesn't really seem to care. He's just kind of like, eh, it tells me which world I'm in, so I don't really care. I mean, I guess as long as he can earn it and spend it, like whatever. Yeah, but how uh, disorienting is that? <laughs> uh, I mean, any more disorienting than being completely drunk all day? Um, I don't think it matters what world he's in. True. I think but, it's, uh, if he, okay. it's convenient too that it's like, yeah, I'm staying at this motel and it's a different name and the diner has a different name, but. Like he's, they still know him, and he still has a job there. Yeah. That's like, true. what if it was really completely different, and he walks in, and they're like, "Who are you? What are you?" Doing? <laughs> yeah, hey, buddy, you want to get the fuck out of there before I call the cops? Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, you know, never thought of that. Well, a good thing it doesn't work more than a day or two, right? Yeah. Now that guy doesn't even bother with his last paycheck. Like he doesn't even need it. Although I guess he's going back. He to doesn't. Him. Yeah. Well, I mean, he does. How do you support a habit if you're uh, not? Uh, I guess what uh, he talks about how the toad ash turnpikes are as addictive as the booze. I can actually see that. Uh, well, he's he's what? still running from everything that happened in Salem's Lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's running from more than that now because he's running from all the vampires. And well, going meant... from Lupe dying, and yeah, that's true. He's not processing he... anything. <laughs> no, he's got a lot of baggage <laughs> that he needs to deal with, and I guess he has a lot of time in the Cala to do that. Well, and I mean, for all we know, he's been. I mean, obviously, something's better because again, he's got some of his faith back. Yeah. So I guess he's been sober for a while. He seems like he's sober. Um, Rowan introduces a terrifying thought that Black 13 might be making the baby stronger. Like I said, I'm worried about it making the thing inside her even stronger. Well, both things may have. That's mm -hmm. main speak. Isn't that main speak may have? It sure sounds like it. See? Everybody in the cow speaks weird main accent. <laughs> like, how do you do, how do you say do you in a main accent? Do, do you? I, I don't think I'll try it. Um, it says uh, it's making both things stronger, basically. Uh, the baby and the baby's keeper. Like, oh, wait, so 
so it's making me a stronger too. That isn't, uh, <laughs> Sounds like. Uh, why? Why is it on Mia? The Black Thirteen create Mia for some reason. What's what's the? I don't see the point. Um, I mean, I don't think we know a hundred percent, but I think, I don't think so. I think Mia came with the baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds like Mia's been around for a lot longer than they've been dealing with Black Thirteen. Well, that too. Yeah, how long? I guess since since uh, the uh, what do you call it? The speaking ring, the oracle, wherever they were. I guess mm -hmm. Mia's been around since then, right? Is Mia part of the long, demon? But like when it actually took because Eddie was saying that she's probably around like four months along so probably at least like half of that time wouldn't she be you know showing a little bit at four months well, I think he said something about that and he just like did she look a little rounder you know or something like, yeah he dismissed it <laughs> It could take us anywhere, anywhere. And so I think we're uh, about at the end here, right? The uh, the box, the rose. I mean, yeah, black thirteen is in right. Has has three objects carved on top of it: a rose, a stone, and a door. Yeah. No, yeah. if there's significance there, but well, a leaf. Oh, no, wait, no, I'm sorry. I mean, the rose. Why would Black Thirteen have the rose on it? Because isn't the rose good? And well, we don't good. know where the box came from. <laughs> well, that's true, and we get our first uh, unfound reference, I think, which always. Kind of confused me. Like it, it, I think he said something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What you were saying, Amber. Uh, a leaf, a stone, and an unfound door. Um, what the hell is an unfound door? And can you use it? <laughs> and when you get to it, is it then a found door? <laughs> <laughs> More riddles. Not really. Yeah, like riddles upon riddles. I, I don't understand what an unfound door really is. Um, there's, well, the only thing left, I guess, then is what, Grey Dick, right? And that's, I don't know. I don't, I guess it's the tale we use to uh, start the legend of Lady Ariza and the, the plate throwing people. Mm hmm. Um, so now they know that they have some sort of weapon, at least <laughs> on their side. I still say, man. They're very proficient in, and that seems like it could be very deadly. <laughs> yeah, that thing cut his head right off his body. Like that that is one hell of a plate. I don't care what it's made of. And that's one well, hell of a saying, throw. Like you have to hold it. There's only one place you can even hold it or I'll cut you. <laughs> I yeah. I don't even think I want to touch something like that. I no how can I, I get a grip? And like uh, you know, I picture throwing a plate like like a frisbee. So you're gonna bend it in to get it going. Well, is that gonna cut the shit out of my forearm if I do that? <laughs> if you hit yourself, probably. <laughs> How the hell are you supposed to throw it? Very May careful. First... I like uh, the curse. Was it? May your first day in hell last ten thousand years, and, <laughs> and may it and may it be the shortest. Like whoa. I mean, I guess if you're there for eternity, it doesn't matter how long the days are, right? That's kind of what I was thinking. I'm like, who cares? <laughs> like, are, who's counting days in hell, first of all? But, you know, they're like, eight million until I get out. Like, no, that's, <laughs> that's not how it works. Um, yeah, so they... Uh, why is... Okay, so... The... Uh, the societal structure of the Kala is very weird and like straight out of like 1940s America or something. <laughs> like, like the what's her name? Is it Overholzer's wife? Is the one that's awesome with the plate and she's Eisenhower. 
his name really Eisenhower? Eisenhower. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, he is super ashamed of how good she is at that, and I don't like really get it other than like it's like it's not a woman's place to be that good. Yeah, I didn't really understand that either. Well, because like she said, like don't mock me, and I was like, what is she talking about? Like, yeah, because... that was awesome, and she's like, don't mock me. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, or was it because she said? Also, he called her, kind of said she was lying, or she was like, I can't throw it that far. He's like, I don't believe you, so throw it. <laughs> well, he was right though, so I mean. I know I wasn't sure if that's what she meant. I'm like, is that the mocking? Like, what is happening? What is the problem here? <laughs> what would what would ye visit on us, you charry gun struck man? That sounds like uh, Cordelia. Um, <laughs> yeah, did a lunatic hide deep down inside everyone, even such as woman as this? Uh, yeah, I think there's yes, word answer. Um. Oh, the one other um, last important thing that I noted was that Roland asked the questions about Andy that we were saying before. Like, once they start talking, he's like, um, so who else would set the him, like, to not tell you all this information? Like, what I'd like to know is who or what program Andy not to talk about them, except to tell you folks when they're coming. <laughs> yeah, like, and yeah, it was the Oval, Overholzer and Eisenhower basically do, like, a head slap. They're like, fuck, how did we never think of that? Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know, because that's the first thing I would have thought of. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's given it. Yeah, Eisenhart and his wife were looking at each other, thunderstruck. Yeah. Uh, and then it was like, if Benny were to, and then it's talking about Andy. Oh, yeah. It's programmed for defense, and we'd never be able to change that. But if the cat were to keep coming, like Andy with its pieces. Fast, mm -hmm. is he? Roland asked, uh, what, your bugger, is that a, um, is that a cow thing? I almost said that to Michelle the other day. <laughs> I would just have to repeat myself. She was like, blah, blah, blah. I was like, your bugger. Like, what? No, nah, nothing. I need someone. I need to talk to someone from the tower. <laughs> um, so that kind of, then that short little sentence paints Andy in a whole new light. Like, ooh, Andy's dangerous, not only annoying. Never, mm -hmm. I guess he's a robot, so you didn't really think about that. But you know, if you cross Andy, you could get ripped to pieces. So, mm -hmm. but, like, at in the same vein, though, like if he's programmed for defense, and these wolves have been taking kids for years, why hasn't Andy defended them before now? Right. Clearly, like, that's not what he's programmed to do. Uh. Yeah. Well, he's to defend the kids and. But not from the wolves, <laughs> but I guess. Again, also, so who programmed him to do that? Like, but, have they just never realized that he's actually programmed to defend the wolves? <laughs> and they just don't know because they've never really attacked them before? Right. Wait. Um, wolves never really attacked the kids? What? No, no, no. The, the townsfolk have never really... Like they oh. never put. So they don't know if Andy backwards. would back them up if they rebelled or something. Yeah. Right. Right. I don't know. It's getting more complicated. The <laughs> other, um, sorry, last other last important thing that we see is that Roland uh, is not exactly sure, but doesn't really trust everybody, <laughs> including his own cutout. Well, well, yeah, but just meaning like the he. Uh, what did they say? He says, "Do I think someone's hiding? Do did he know that? He did not. Did he smell it? I he did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I saw that. And they also mention how the wolves seem to know where they are. I say, spread them kids out. Like he said, no matter where they hide them, they seem to sniff them out. Maybe. Oh, and uh, is it is it uh, Eisenhart's kids were like, "You people are stupid. Fuck this. We're getting out of here." 
yeah, yeah, I liked that interpretation where she's like, um, you know, at least the people who are in town still have one of their kids and we lost all of them. I mean, that's a good point. Uh, but I don't, I mean, yeah, either way, you kind of lose both of them. But well, at least, at least you have one their kids are normal. living their own yeah. lives. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I, you know, did it work? How long ago did they leave? Like, are they, did they escape the? I guess we don't know that yet. Right? Yeah. Like, how are the wolves going to be like? Hey, where's your kids at? Ah, we got to go get them now. Because uh, that's the way, like, the townsfolk seem like you can't run far enough to get away from the wolves. Like, why not? But at the same time, they, they don't always find all of the children, so it's like it's right. not a hundred percent. And you could get a twenty-seven year. Fuck. Oh wait, is it twenty-three or twenty-seven? 23. 27 is oh, it. <laughs> I know. I was going to say that would have been perfect. Yeah. That he would needs, have been a great needs, buy in. <laughs> yeah. He needs a retrofit that. Um, so you can get a 23 year head start. So, I mean, you can go pretty goddamn far in 23 years. <laughs> you know, hell, you could be in Cali and you could be in like 40 different worlds by then. I was or just thinking that. I'm like, what if they found their own door, or own bridge? Like, can the wolves find them in another <laughs> version of the world? Wouldn't that suck if you're just like sitting there and like a door opens and you know in the air and wolves come out of it? I feel like, <laughs> wow. like just like sitting on the beach in a cannon or something, and a door opens in front of you. You're like, oh damn it! <laughs> Shit! Quick, open the door. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's basically how it ends with Roland going. I can't trust anybody. But, you know. Although he is telling that he's up to something that we don't know because that's like the, he's telling them who Eisenhart did. He's going to use him as bait, but he's thinking there's no way in hell they're ever ever going to be in that uh, pit or wherever he's telling them to put them. The mine. Oh, right. Yeah, which I I. Uh... I don't believe that because, again, he let Jake fall. Well, I think what he's saying is that, like, he's going to tell everyone this because if there is somebody who's telling the wolves where the kids are, they're going to tell the wolves, but the kids aren't actually going to be there. Right. I get so that. So it's like a decoy. Yeah. So, no, I'm, I, as... I get that, but... So I don't think he plans on letting the kids die, like, or even be the bait in the first place. Yeah. I, I could see him letting them be the bait, because he would be, well, first of all, you know, oh, well, if they die, who cares? I'm still going to the tower. Yeah. And he's probably confident enough in his ability to save them if he put them in there. That I'm not saying happen. he wouldn't. I'm saying I don't think that's what he's doing, or I don't think that's what he's planning right now. No, I don't think he is. Yeah, I think you're right. He's trying to sniff out the mole. Yeah. So he's he's running out like. Who says there is a mole? Why does That's he think there's I said, a mole? If there is one, he's trying to make sure that information gets back to the wolves. Yeah. Why is what makes? I guess he's just generally suspicious. Like, what makes him think? Well, they talked what, about and, that before. That the what are they that, reporting back to the wolves? Like, what? What do they report back to the wolves? Like the kids are still here? I don't, I don't know what you mean by that. Well, he wants to, he said, uh, you know, he's telling them they're going to be here. So for whoever's reporting, oh, I see what you mean. They're telling the yeah. wolves where they're hiding the kids. Okay. Right. right. Um, maybe. I guess we'll find out. Because they brought that up previously when they were talking about it, where it's like, how do the wolves always know where the kids are, even when they're being hidden? Like, maybe someone's telling them. And it's not perfect. Like, so they don't always find them all. I, I'm telling you, it right. feels like the, sing, the single, I was about to say singleton, uh, the ones that are by themselves and not with a bunch of other kids, they don't seem to find, which I, guess, I mean, I guess could be because the mole doesn't know where everyone is. He knows where most of them are, if, right. if there is one. I was kind of working on the theory that all them kids together would have a lot of some kind uh, of juice. I don't know. Yeah, like like Ted, like psychic energy or something. 
and the wolves can like sniff out you know I, I don't know like whether it's a kid or an adult that they're they're smelling almost like a dog so when they're all together oh. it's stronger yeah so they're yeah. following the scent That's they're following the scent basically um, yeah so. it would help if we knew what the wolves were <laughs> true they're, they are Dr. Doom's on horseback <laughs> um okay I think we're basically good, right? We're well, what's the um how big is the next part? Hold on. I think it's uh, three, three sixty nine so like hundred and forty pages, that's not bad. Yeah, it's about the first of the about the same amount as the first part of part two. Okay. Everybody good? Yep. Yep. Uh, that is the end of the podcast. Everybody say bye. Bye. Bye.